Hi everybody, it's Jackie schomburg Minen here. I am starting two new mixed media pieces in this sketchbook. Currently, you'll see me going through all the tissue paper prints that I made using the stencils from PM Artist Studio. I will put a link to them in the description here. Uh, love their stencils. A lot of the other work that I did was just freestyle Jackie gel plate <laughs> paper. Um, but I wanted to see how the stencils and some of the other uh, tissue paper would work in a mixed media situation. I decided on the color palette using phthalo turquoise and pyrrole orange and then white and black. I'm not exactly sure why I picked these two colors, but I really like the lightness of the pyrrole turquoise, especially when it's mixed with white. So I'm just trying to get paint on the paper right now. Different shades of the phthalo turquoise tint. I like to work across the spread of the sketchbook. I've got two pages looking at me, I might as well use them both. I did wonder if this looked too much like a like a baby boy baby shower blue at this point. But I decided I'd keep going. I really liked how these stencils turned out in my gel plate. Fun design, super interesting. It's a little busy, which I like sometimes, but it's definitely um, something that you need to be in the mood for. So this is some of my yarn tissue paper. I'm not sure if it's because I picked the patterned pieces right away and put those on, but I did feel like these were challenging. And I think maybe it's because I didn't want to cover up the new stenciled paper. So I kind of kept that as precious because I wanted to see what it would look like in finished art. So that was my first mistake. If you want something for sure to show through at the end, add it at the end. Don't start with it. Otherwise, you'll spend your whole painting tiptoeing around it and it's not going to help you and it's not going to help your art. I have to relearn that again and again and again also. So no judgment here. Just a pro tip. I added the black stencil. I added the black paint to step away from the baby shower blue. I'm using a pipette right now just to add some water right on top of the black paint to make it really watery but also to have a directionality about it. If I use my spray bottle it would just make a big spritz shape up at the top rather than just let the water pour down first. It takes a lot longer to, to uh, use a hair dryer on paper that's actually dripping wet. But as it dries, you can see how the water gets so, um, it, the, the darkness of the water gets much lighter when it dries. 
So some neo color crayons. This is like a dark orange, like a red orange color. Because I know the pyrrole orange is coming. I didn't want it to be too matchy matchy, but I wanted to have some other oranges in here. This is also um, another neo color crayon. This is actually a yellow ochre color. Adding some white. trying to get different blends of the phthalo turquoise. So this is a little bit less sweet. It's a little bit darker. Added a lot of water, which is why it's so transparent on the left side. You can watch me literally paint around the pattern on the left. Use a spray bottle to get some of those water droplet marks. And I'm not sure if it's because I normally don't use phthalo turquoise, but I felt a bit lost making these to this point. Sorry, this is a mystery. <laughs> this is just making some drops, drips. And you can see I'm coloring over a decent chunk of the picture with this color, but I'm not sure I love it as I'm doing it, which is fine. I do that a lot. When in doubt, do something. More drips. But in my head, I'm trying to I'm probably telling myself, okay, Jackie, relax. You can see that I uh, lost a portion of the video. I kept going, but the, <laughs> the video stops. So all the things I tell myself I'm doing here. When in doubt, add some white. I'm using my color shaper, my trusty color shaper. Just covering up portions. Carving into the paint. Very little of this feels like me so far. Although the right the right side, I like that orange shape that I did. It looks a little bit to me like an abstract dog with the head on the left and then the, you know, scruffy legs on the right. No, sorry, the head on the right, scruffy legs on the left. Now, I went through a lot of collage options here. I kept thinking that I could add the right piece of collage and bail myself out, which does happen. It did not happen here. At least I didn't feel like it happened here. You may disagree. If you want to cheer for me, I am so all over it. So adding that little white, just a little hint of those rune stone, the rune stone stencil. I'm not sure, I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm not sure if this was just too, um, like too limited at the beginning because I'm just using that one super bright red orange crayon and the phthalo turquoise. There's not really anything else going on here. I think I would have been better off had I used a bunch of different colors 
or at least different blends with the turquoise rather than just working with the with the turquoise so directly and white I'm adding this white with a paper towel just to get a different application method make some different shapes I really like how the paper towels blend nicely too. Get a nice veil over things. So it looks like you're looking through a fog. Now at this point, the left side, I don't know, it's interesting. There's something to look at. It's like a really weird jellyfish or something. The right side is completely, I have no idea what's going to happen there. Absolutely none. I keep trying, <laughs> but it's uh, a sinking ship. But again, that that's, sometimes those are the best pieces because when you're making something and you feel like it's a sinking ship anyway, at least when I do it, I'm much more willing to take risks. On the left side, I'm still being careful around that stenciled piece. All right, finally going to add some pyro orange. Even just adding that first brush stroke, it made me feel better. kind of looks like rainbow or not rainbow like orange sherbet or like a dreamsicle or something adding the orange over the white and then wiping it away oh, I wish I had left that like that on the right but alas I did not I get myself in trouble when I futz around with the brush just for the sake of doing something. I want to do something. I encourage you guys to do something. If you're not sure what to do, just do something. See, now that looks cool too on the right side. Why didn't I just stop there? That's the question. I guess I would have found other areas and reasons to keep going but it does look cool. There's something cool about that right now. Nope. <laughs> Should have stopped before that. I don't know, that doesn't look too bad actually. The drips help. It's funny how watching this again I feel all the same moments of like, oh, why did I do that? But this is truly, I think, what defines an artist. Uh, not that you end up with something pretty in the end, but that you keep trying to see what you can do. So what happens next? What happens if I do this? What happens if I add some more drops? What happens if I add this pyrrole orange peachy color? What happens if I mix it with some blue now? And paint over that. Right? It's that quest and that curiosity that keeps us interested, A. Keeps us interesting, B. Because people always are finding new things that we're up to because we're curious and we keep trying new things. We keep trying different things. We keep trying different color families. We keep trying different methods. We keep trying different substrates. We keep trying different shapes. 
you can stay in your in your style and still try a bunch of different things. I do feel like uh, not yet. <laughs> By the end of these, I feel like these represent me really well as an artist. And I feel like those of you who've been watching these videos would probably agree. Let me know in the comments if you agree that it looks like what you would expect. You know, you, you could look at it and say, yeah, I'd, I believe that Jackie would have made that. I think that it's true to me and my aesthetic at the end. Here, especially on the right, I don't know. <laughs> I just keep adding things. And it, it amuses me because it just feels like such a mess. And it's funny to me because there's nothing to lose by adding more. That's the best part. When something's almost great, it's almost amazing. There's a lot of room, you know, there's a lot you can lose. If you're, you know, if you're attached to what you're making, but if you don't like what you're making or you don't know what direction it's going, or you think it's kind of just totally a mess, which is where I am with the one on the right, there's nothing to lose. Just keep experimenting, keep playing, don't stop. Because when you stop, then it stays a mess forever. If you keep going, eventually you'll find something. At least that's always my hope. I like to remain optimistic on that. You can tell I really wanted that string piece to go in. So much can change in your work depending on the little details. So people talk about what is your artist style, um, artistic style. And that can be as simple as do you cut everything with scissors or do you tear everything or do you do half and half? I feel like the decision to tear some parts and cut some parts is such a such a tiny detail but people do it intuitively and you kind of it just adds to the character and adds to one more little detail that people can look at and say oh yeah i bet that you know she did that or he did that that's definitely a, a painting that feels like jackie made it When I first started out, I thought that was, that your artistic style was more like, you know, you always made the same, uh, you use the same color palette, which is part of it. Or I thought you always, you know, you always painted birds, which is, which could be a thing. I didn't realize it was like all in the minutia too. Now the left side is coming together. I like the addition of that uh, black, the, the circles and the orbs. Then I brought in some Payne's Gray. Mind you, the Payne's Gray started, this probably, gosh, there's probably like a three week break in between when I added the collage piece on the left, the big spheres to when I did the Payne's Gray edition, that navy. So I finished these up today and that left, the right side still gave me a lot of, gave me a good workout. This piece was helpful, this black piece, but it was it was helpful and then I tried to stick with it too much 
and it was hard for me to let go of staying with all of those lines and being too, you know, like literal with it. This is some removable scotch tape that I found to be really, really good. So it doesn't rip any paper at all. And this is a tip I got from, oh gosh, I can't remember her name, um, but her handle on Instagram is making.me, M-A-K-I-N-G dot M-E. She's awesome. So I'm looking at this now, the black collage piece on the right reminds me of like a, an overhead view of runways at an airport. I think it's entertaining if you look at the palette that I'm using you can see how many colors I didn't use <laughs> I didn't use so many At least you guys know I practice what I preach. <laughs> when I say when in doubt, add white. At least you know I do it myself. So it's all very vertical. Those big long drip lines on the left the left side of the right page. I wanted to come up with something that would break those lines up a bit so it wasn't just long lines from the top. And I'm looking to see if there are any yarn lines that match up with those stripes. They didn't have to match up, I just like matching things up. So I like that that is a little loop-de-loop -loop that feels very different from the lines and the collage piece because they're so angular and the little loop-de-loop -loop with yarn, print, obviously it's curved, just feels looser. Now I'm adding quinacridone gold, which just warms things up so nicely. I usually go a little too crazy with it, which I did again. And I'm using a wipe to apply the Payne's Gray over it. And it's feeling more and more like me. I think the Quinacridone Gold helped me warm things up a bit. So it's more vibrant. 
the left side also feels more vibrant, adding the quinacridone gold in the middle of the, the rune pattern. So all in all, I think I ended up with two really good pieces. I really like both of them for very different reasons. And I think I saved them. So let me know in the comments what you think. Does it look like I made these? If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, please go ahead and hit subscribe. I post new videos every Sunday and I would love to deliver more new content right into your inbox. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.